central control room, the entire plant, right from the crusher section to, to the uh, clinker loading is controlled from, from these computer monitors. This is where the entire start and stop buttons and, and the signals such as temperature, pressure, uh, condition of the equipment is all uh, uh, monitored through, through these, moni uh, through these uh, uh, computers here. I mentioned the signal cable. We've got nearly 250 kilometers of cable which go from this building to every equipment in the plant and, and, and it brings back the signal uh, and, and the operation is here. So we'll, sh we'll, we'll show you one or two sequences of, of, of the, uh, of the uh, control panel here. But before that, this is a, a, a live camera view of what is happening inside the kiln. This is a 60-meter long kiln, a 4.4-meter diameter kiln. And currently, let me just go there. The kiln is, is lined with refractory, refractory bricks, high-temperature magnesite bricks. The kiln is lined with refractory uh, bricks which can resist temperature of up to 1,500 degrees centigrade. This is a coal firing going on in the kiln. And right at the end of our tour, we'll come back and we'll see uh, the kiln on the burner platform. The, we're firing coal, uh, and the temperature in the, in the, in the, in the kiln is at about 1,450 degrees. The last, compute, last screen there shows the temperature profile. There's an infrared camera which is focused on the beginning right up to the end. We are discharging clinker at the moment at the rate of 3,300 tons, 3,500. You've increased it. So up to yesterday, we were producing at 3,300 tons a day. Uh, <coughs> you can see clinker uh, uh, dropping that is discharging. And from here, it goes into what is called a cooler. And that's at the bottom, and then into the silo. Um, and then this is, this is clinker formation happening here. The different operators are, are managing different parts of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the entire process. 750 tons uh, per hour. So there's a, there's a measure also which tells you how much you are crushing. The entire sequence from, from the crusher into the, into the belt, there's a, a dust collector uh, which sucks out the fine powders. So it, from an environment point of view. All the equipment, the condition of the equipment is also captured in this, in this mimic diagram. Uh, if there is a, the, the dust collector, for example, have bags, filter bags. If any of the filter bags get punctured, which they occasionally do with, with bits of limestone dust, then the, the exhaust of dust increases, and that also is captured. We have certain norms, environmental norms to maintain, at the moment, we're maintaining well below the, uh, the required standards. And, and if there are any problems, we can capture that also in, 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 in the dust collector in the mimic diagram here. So the majority of the operation is done through, through, um, uh, through radio walkie-talkies. Uh, I think you guys spend a lot of money on your cell phones as well these days. Um, but this is what, what the field operators use if there is any issues. Uh, a signal goes out to them, a message goes out to them to attend to a problem, to, to correct a problem. There are, of course, local start and stop buttons at each equipment. Uh, but when you walk around the plant, you will find there are not many people uh, attending to the plants. Most of the attention is the maintenance work, the lubrication work, the uh, 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 replacement of wear and tear parts, and so on. So the entire operation is controlled. Uh, through automation. So we pick up signals like temperature, pressures, uh, equipment, condition of equipment. Uh, so bearings, for example, bearings have a life. Uh, how many hours has a bearing run? If there is a sound, there's some, some of the equipment here, the signals control, capture the, the, the sound, and from the sound, it is digitized to show whether the, uh, the equipment is running correctly or not. The right amount of limestone amount of clay, amount of uh, 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 iron ore, the mixture is controlled from here, as given by the laboratory. So the laboratory uh, has number of checks that they do on an hourly basis, daily basis, weekly basis. Uh, 
and, and the feeding is controlled from these computers. Sometimes you have to adjust if there's a, a little more moisture in the raw materials because of rain, uh, then the volumes and the percentages have to change to allow for that. So similar things, if there's a variation in the raw material at the quarry, and because it's a natural raw material, sometimes you get more clay. We were fortunate when we first started the lime plant in the year 2002, uh, we, we acquired a lot of land, uh, both for limestone mining and for setting up an industrial plant. And we're lucky there are two lines uh, just passing right in front of, our, of, of the plant. These two lines originate from different sources. There is 132 kV line which, which, which comes in from Hale, what is called the Hale substation and Maji Mapana substation. Both have, are fed through the national grid uh, with, with, with power. This panel is the, the receiving panel for both lines. It's, it's synchronous. If there is any problem uh, or maintenance issue in one line, the other line kicks in seamlessly so we don't have any uh, interruptions in, in the voltage or in the power supply. Uh, the, uh, we, I think this, is, this, is, this installation itself is, is uh, for an industrial scales like this is worth many, many millions of dollars. Uh, we were lucky because the power lines were close by. In, uh, in our plant in Dar es Salaam, we had to pay for and build uh, a dedicated 33 kilometer line of power from, from a substation in the, in, the, in the center of Dar es Salaam to our plant south of Dar es Salaam. So we were lucky that we didn't have a similar cost, but it's still a fairly major uh, installation and, and part of the, of, the, of the project here. Uh, over to you, Hassan. This is the control room, and it is, sees all the things which is happening outside there. It monitors here. And uh, as we are the industri uh, energy industry, we are giving all the priority to the industries. We have almost three, at least three industries, big industries, including Maweni, the one. We have another one, Tanga Cement. And we have another one which is still bu building in up there, which we call it Sungura. We are giving all the priority, the first priority to those industries because they are the ones who are, are giving us the revenue at the highest level. At the moment, we are having a little bit problem for two weeks ago, and we'll be having this problem for another two weeks to come. We are now commissioning a new generating plant which will be using gas at Dar es Salaam. It will, be, it will produce 150 megawatt, which will be injected into the grid as a measure to avoid or to eliminate the problem of power in our country. This will be the first phase of 150, but there will be another second, third, and fourth phases, which we are expecting to have 600 megawatt. Also, in order to make sure that those industries get quality, good electrical power, we are still we, are, we have the project to construct 400 kV line from Dar es Salaam, which will link with another one from Northern Highland, and it will go to no, to northern to, from west, Western Highland, it, it will go to Northern Highland. We'll see them up there. And from, we'll tap from 400 kV line to Tanga, which will be 220 kV line. All this is the plan to make sure that all the industries at Tanga get the reliable power at all time. Timeline, just tell us when, when all this is going to happen. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is the plan which we have been started since last year and we are expecting within three to four years it will will finish this project and we are sure that you will get reliable power supply to our industry so, so the most important thing is currently uh, the the new 150 megawatt power plant is being commissioned 
uh, and he mentioned some interruptions because this is the time when they, they are testing the new power plant and commissioning and, and injecting that power into the grid. In the next two weeks, Tanzania should see another 150 megawatts, which will give more reliability. The new power lines, the uh, transmission lines, will also make the entire grid much more stable and, and uh, much more flexible in case one power station is down for maintenance, then others, uh, other, station, other generation stations are linked through these transmission lines. And overall, we expect a much more stable power. However, we have no complaints at the moment because we are on, already on the 132 kV national grid where it is actually very difficult for the regional managers to switch off also. So I'll just ask uh, the regional manager to, to, uh, to say a few words. Yeah, in fact, uh, <clears throat> let me speak, uh, let me inform you about uh, to assure that they are getting power, reliable power because they're just getting two lines, as they've been explained before, that they're getting from Halle side, 132,000 kilovolts, as well as in Majan Mapana. So once one of this line, once this is being affected, either damaged or conductor broken, then no, no problem with the factory. They're getting from this end of Majan Mapana. Yeah, in fact, I just want to assure you that uh, they get reliable supply to this factory. We're operating at about 70% capacity utilization. Now, not all the equipment works at the same time. The crushers are designed to work for an, on an eight-hour shift, for example. The mills on, on a 15, 16 hours per day. Mills, uh, the, the kill works 24 hours. But we have sufficient power for the capacity that, uh, that we are producing now. Over the next three months, we expect to scale up the capacity to a full 100% at 4,000 tons per day. And, and with the injection of the 150 megawatts of power now, we have, uh, we have confident, we've been assured, correct me, that there's absolutely no problem with, with the power here. And I think that was the main message that we wanted to give you here as we start. Uh, there's a map of, uh, of Tanzania, I'd just like to, to I'm, you're, I'm sure all of you are familiar, uh, but in, in any case, if, if anybody wants to just have the bearings, have a look at the map. Uh, from here, we will go to our central control room we'll, uh, where we have some breakfast. You'll change your shoes. Ladies, I think you're going to need safety shoes uh, and, and, and a helmet. And we'll see our control room. And after that, we will take a tour of the plant, starting with a quarry. Uh, we may have a little bit of walking down the plant to, from the quarry to the crusher, uh, crusher areas, to the stacker reclaimer, which is the raw material homogenization, from there to the, to the coal mill, uh, and the raw mills for, for crushing the limestone, for grinding the limestone, and then up in the preheater tower of the kill. And you'll see this. There's a route map uh, uh, also, so you have a familiar, uh, you're familiar with the, with the route. The entire plant is located uh, over a, a one square kilometer area. It's almost one kilometer from where we are standing to the quarry, uh, and uh, lengthwise uh, another 800 meters across.